I've been collecting watches for like five or six years now and I definitely have made like a lot of mistakes. And since I've been posting on social media, I've seen a lot of other people make mistakes and tell me about their mistakes. So today I'm gonna show you the 10 biggest watch mistakes for me and other people so you don't make the same ones. By the way, if you don't know me, my name's Ben. I run Ben's Watches. We do all things watch reviews, watch content, watch trading literally everything we kind of just do it on youtube uh whatever it's called the short form content youtube we do instagram reels and what i really started on was TikTok, and i grew that platform and we're kind of trying to grow everywhere i haven't been posting on youtube a lot but i recently got this camera you can tell the increase in quality if you've watched my other videos so we're gonna start doing more youtube so these are my 10 biggest watch regrets we're gonna get right into it the first one a controversial one really is buying retail i think this goes without saying but buying retail especially in the market we're in right now in february of 2024 doesn't make any sense at all although i don't like really think watches are investments like other these like gurus and watch traders and people trying to sell you watches really tell you. I think if you're you and me, you don't have an unlimited budget, you're always worried about what's gonna happen to the price of this watch. I don't care who you are, and if you deny that, you're just lying to yourself. But what I will say is one obvious thing you can do is you can just not buy retail. Like for example, I think it was, this was like March of 2022, it was my first like really big watch purchase. I'm talking like my first purchase over like $3,000. I bought an Omega Seamaster 300 meter professional with the white dial and the black rubber strap. I, I ended up selling and I'll get to that. But, but I bought that in New York City and the retail price was like just under $5,500 and it got almost close to $6,000 plus tax in New York City, which is just an insane amount of money to begin with. But literally three months later, I got this random call for a Rolex Submariner. And, and in hindsight, I'm like, I probably we shouldn't have done it because I don't have that watch anymore I traded for this but I was like oh like I don't really want to buy it but this is kind of my only opportunity because this person that was calling me was like I'm quitting so you just want to get this and I'm like yeah but then when I sold my Seamaster Professional I wasn't thinking I only got $3,800 for it which is basically means that I lost almost $2,000 on a watch when you're spending $5,500 and you're losing two grand as soon as you walk out of the store it's like what are we doing here? The second point, which is kind of like the first point, but opposite is trying to buy the cheapest reference number of the watch you're looking for on the internet. And really this is like for one reason, one reason only is it can lead you just into a world of trouble. For one, it can lead to like an incorrect or fake watch. And obviously you don't want that. And if you're trying to buy the cheapest one, the odds of you getting something that's incorrect or wrong are you know higher and that's very obvious but i think even on the flip side too a lot of these sellers are trying to sell it for the cheapest yeah sometimes you'll find deals which i have done before but those sellers are generally also like the lowest quality sellers i guess you would say so these are the people that might throw in a fake box they might you know, give you a watch that's not serviced, which I'll get to in one of the other points. The third is buying something that hasn't been serviced. And I think this really, it, it's really like when you buy something and it's a seven year old watch. Let's say you're buying a Submariner and on the gray market, it's seven years old and it's the person hasn't serviced it yet. They had it for those seven years and they want to sell it to you. The problem is, is yes, you're probably fine. The watch will probably get you another couple years, no problem but they're trying to get out of that before they're trying to service it. It's been seven years, eight to 10 years, especially on a Rolex, is when people really start servicing and shit goes wrong, essentially, and it's when you're supposed to. But a service on that can be very expensive. That's almost $1,000, and that should be baked into the cost, which these people won't tell you. If they're like, oh, I'd never have this service. Okay, well, that means that at some point, if I have this for three years, I'm gonna have to spend the thousand dollars or whatever it is to go service it. Number four, if it's too good to be true, like if you find a deal that's too good to be true, it 100%, a thousand times is. And this really goes without saying at anything in life. I don't care if it's your job. I don't care if you're buying a house. I don't, I don't care if it's a girl like or a guy or whoever you're dating, it doesn't matter. Like. If it's too good to be true, it is. And this story will kind of illustrate that. So like around five years ago, I've been collecting for like seven or eight years. So it was a couple years into my collecting and I just discovered like watch trading in these groups like Moda and these groups on Facebook that people go in and they post watches and you could sell them between each other. You can make a little bit of money, but also it's a cool way to get better pricing online or whatever, which now I realize is complete BS. It's all just like you're shopping on eBay. But I found a watch on ebay and it was a cartier santos and it was a thousand dollars and if you know anything you know that that's an incredible deal and i'm like 
it looks real to me. I didn't know anything, right? Like I, when I say I was a collector, like I was a collector, but this was a vintage watch. So I, it was hard to tell. And I'm like, I'm just buying it. I bought it for $1,000 and I, I kept it. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll hold on to it. I'll wait a little bit and I'll try to sell it somewhere. And then like, it was like six months later, I'm, I'm looking at the watch. I'm like, this thing is fake. I realize that and I go to eBay. I say, look, like this is the watch. They have the pictures in the system. It's not like they can't see like, it's obviously fake. And they wouldn't refund me. So now I've been stuck with this for almost four, four and a half years now, something like that. Now, is that my fault? A hundred percent. But this is also why I can never recommend anybody shop on eBay, whether it's their authenticity guarantee or whatever, because if that is a company that, you know, fake and crap stuff has been sold on before, which is fine. But now under $2,000, you can find a ton of fake stuff, fake Seikos coming from the Middle East, fake Omegas, Seiko mods, all this nonsense from all over the world that you could buy and eBay doesn't give a shit, but there's ways that people can claim something's custom so that it doesn't go through the authentication program. It's all BS. And number five is buying hype watches. Um, this goes without saying, but the watch market ebbs and flows, right? One minute, it's massive sports models that everybody wants. One minute, like now, it's vintage gold watches under 35 millimeters with stone dials. Right? Unless you really like the watch, go for it. But the thing about hype is there are a lot of people and the people who create this hype, are some guy who's famous for being a collector and he spots this watch that I'm not talking about anybody specifically, this just, it does happen. There'll be a guy on Instagram and he finds all these cool watches or whatever and he buys them and then he buys them for $3,000, this like vintage gold Piaget, for example. And then he'll go sell it to 10 because he'll post about it. Somebody's like, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's really cool. And he'll go make seven grand, even though he's not a watch dealer. That's his model. And it's all about creating hype of these watches that they've loaded up on. They have access. You just don't want to get caught up in the hype. You just should buy what you like. If you like that, then go buy that from them, right? If you actually legitimately like it, fine. But eventually that's not going to be in style and they're not sports models. So it's not going to be everyday piece. It's a little weird. So just be careful. Don't buy hype. Number six, which is really for like the new collectors out there is go try on the watches you see online before you buy them. And this kind of like from point one, when I was like, you know, make sure you're buying, like don't buy retail for a lot of the watches if they're like super discount in the gray market. And that stands true. But if you see online, you're like, oh my gosh, like an Omega C Master Professional looks awesome. But this is only on eBay. Like I or I'll take bezel for example, because actually I could actually recommend you to go buy from them. I could totally buy that, but I don't know if I'd like it, right? I don't know if I can go into the store Omega and then just try it on and leave. Yeah, you can. You can do that. You could go with the intention of buying on the gray market, you could go to Omega and go try it on. And you could be like, hey, I'm in the market, I'm thinking about buying this. I probably won't buy it today. They'll let you try it on as long as you're just a nice dude. And then you can leave and go buy it on Bezel, right? That's number seven I'll say is don't go big too quickly. And again, this is for your sort of beginner collector. I I just see a lot of the times people come to me like, Ben, I bought, you know, it's I've been collecting for six months. I have a Rolex, I have an Omega, I have a Breitling, I have five Seikos. It's like, relax, relax. Like I love watches too. I do stupid shit, but at a certain point, you don't want to spring for like crazy watches all of a sudden. You don't even know what you like. And I'm still learning what I like. I've been doing this for seven, eight, seven or eight years. I'm constantly changing. One minute I like vintage, one minute I like modern. I'm in a vintage kick right now. Like it's all over the place. And just, I don't want somebody to go in immediately full force. For a beginner collector, even if you have the money, even if you're like, my budget right now is $5,000, Spend 500 instead of buying a Seamaster at $5,000, buy a Seiko 5 Diver at like 250. And this also dovetails in the number eight, which is important for everybody. And I just saw this in a video on YouTube and I forget exactly what the creator's name was, but it was really important to me, which was having a budget for your watch collection. I think a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I don't want it at a certain point, but they don't have that like in their head. They're like, I want it to be $10,000 the entire collection can't be more than 10,000 valued, right? And nobody really gets to that point. They're like, oh, I would like it to be around 10,000, but all of a sudden you're like, I have $25,000 in watches. For me recently, I started doing that. I, I got a little crazy. I had the Starbucks, I had the Grand Seiko Shunbun, I had you know, a Nomos, I had a bunch of watches. I'm like, this is too much. This is too much. It added up to like over $20,000. And I'm like, at the point in my life right now, the point in my career, at a certain point, yeah, the budget's gonna increase. But right now, there's no point in me having all these watches. I'm lucky 
that I get to test drive all these watches. Like I just had a Zenith Skeleton. I have a Tag Warrior Skipper right now that I get to wear and test drive. So I got to get that fixed. But like my budget right now for my collection, it can't be valued more than 15. Number nine, number nine, right? Is that nine? Yeah, number nine, what I will say is buy the dealer. And you've heard this a billion times. You've heard this from all different kinds of people. But I am serious. When you are buying a watch, you know, unless you're very experienced, in watch collecting, you've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years. You don't need to buy the dealer. You you know how this works. You're, you, you have friends or whatever. It's fine. But when you're starting out, buy the dealer. Spend up a little bit for the correct rate. So buy from, for example, Bob's Watches or Bezel. If you're buying vintage and you're going to spend $10,000, buy from Eric Wind. Like These are the people that I personally trust because they are either industry veterans or they're extremely transparent like Bezel about their authentication process. All these other companies have an authentication system, but they're just outsourcing it to some random company. You know? And 10, probably the funnest thing is I would say join a watch group. I think we've all like, we are our, our spouses, um, our friends, our family are probably tired of us talking about watches. Uh, most of the time, you probably none of these people even like watches, you just like them. And I think it's so cool to be a part of community where you can have people and talk to people about watches once a month. So the one I like is uh, Red Bar. I'm not being paid to say this. It doesn't cost any money to join, but it's all over the world. It's in all different cities in the US. I would join it personally. Um, I am in the New York one. I show up every so often, but it's just a great way to kind of meet other people with watches. You get to see other watches. You just kind of get to make that connection over it. So definitely join a watch group. Um, it's something I really didn't do until the last year and I wish I did it and I'm thinking about starting my own. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you want to like and subscribe, you can do that, whatever. Also, I do have a newsletter. So we have a couple thousand people, which is really, really cool on my website. So basically you sign up. I send every week, I send watch news, kind of what I'm doing in the industry. You know, pretty much anything watches once a week. It's been really cool. I'm going to cover watches and wonders in it. I mean, I cover pretty much everything. And I think it's just a cool place that you kind of get that weekly update on the watch world. Um, so you can sign up. It's in kind of the link in the description, I think. And yeah, thanks so much. Really appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned to more videos. Go watch another one, maybe up here, right here.